and this is another focused moment. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, I really love being able to do these videos and to be able to just share out from what God is doing in my life, what uh, hopefully God is doing in your life, and just to bring some encouragement and inspiration as we move forward from this crazy thing that we've been doing here, you know, this crazy world that we're living in and moving from the week and finishing off our week strong and moving into the weekend. And so uh, hopefully you feel that as well. Hopefully you feel that God is doing some great things. It's, it's crazy. The world is crazy. There's all kinds of things going on out there, but hopefully you feel strong and encouraged that God is in control and God is on the throne. And that's what we're going to be talking about today uh, or in, the, in this video. And so at the very beginning of this year, and, and I say this all the time, and I say this on purpose all the time, because in January, we didn't realize that the world was going to be like it is now here in July when, when we're doing this video and we're recording this live. But back then we were talking about if you want to grow in the Lord and you want to grow in your relationship with the Lord, then one of the things that you need to do is make sure that these spiritual disciplines are active in your life. And just very quickly, four very important spiritual disciplines that need to be in your life. Reading the Bible, and, and I'm not talking about getting a verse in a, in a, in a Bible app and reading a, a paragraph. I'm talking about getting good amounts of the Bible inside of you every single day. You think about how much TV you, you watch compared to how much Bible you read and weigh those two things. Then prayer. Prayer has got to be a very important part of our lives. That's when we talk to the Lord, but it's also when he talks to us. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Jesus said that it's better for you that I go because I will send another comforter, one like him. Not some, It's like Jesus didn't go up to heaven and then send back, you know, like the B team. He sent the A team. He sent the A plus team, right? And so we really need to understand that when, when we say the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is, is on the inside of us. And this is a great gift that God has given us to lead us and to guide us and to help us to understand what he desires for our lives. And then the, the fourth thing is this Christian uh, you know, Christian relationships, and we need to have that in our life. And if you don't have that, you need to have that. And that needs to be very important. And, and I hope that we can help with that um, here in, you know, by doing these, these videos and these, in, you know, going live on Sunday morning and doing these videos, but also, uh, or these, these Thursday night devotionals, but also doing uh you know some of the bible studies that we're looking to do here in the future and and i'm hoping to be able to announce some of that life has been so crazy for me right now keep me in your prayers but life has been so crazy that uh, i i am working on that in the evening times and trying to get everything ready and ready to go so i want to open up with a scripture uh today and today the title of this message is fight it or allow it so fight it or allow it and so let me go to my browser view here and I want to open up with um, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. And you know, Bible Gateway changed on me today. If you can see it, it looks a little bit different. Uh, not a little bit. It looks a lot different than I was used to. And uh, so they did this. I think they tested this like uh, a couple of months ago. And then all of a sudden it went away and then it came back. So I don't know. I kind of like it. It looks clean, but we'll see. All right, so Proverbs 16, 9, let's look at this. It's over here on the left-hand side because it's Proverbs and it's, it's written in that, uh, you know, that poem form. It says this, The mind of man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Now, that right there can be very scary. That can be a good thing or it can be a scary thing. The mind of man plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. Now, I say that it can be a scary thing because if you're the type of person that you like to be completely in control and everything, I mean, you are, yeah, I mean, you're your own man and no one can tell you what to do and, and, and you are in control, then that's scary because the Lord directs the steps. The Lord, the Lord is in, in control. 
Now, it's a good thing if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, and you you desire to be led by the Holy Spirit. You desire that God, you know that God is in control, and you desire for God to help and lead you and guide you. Then that's a great thing, because who's better than God? I mean, come on. I mean, you want the government doing it? You want, you know, somebody somebody else telling you how to live life and how to direct your steps? No, man, I want God. So here's the thing. Wherever you stand on that, you're going to either be fighting it or you're going to be allowing it. You're going to be fighting the things of God in your life or you're going to be allowing the things of God. And so where are you right now with that? Where are you in your relationship with the Lord? Do you find yourself arguing with God? I mean, come on, let's be honest. I've been there before myself fighting with God. Like, God, what in the heck? Come on, God. Why Why is this going on? What is going on? And there's been other times like, God, I'm, I'm good with whatever you want. I might not like it, like it, but I'm good because I know that you are directing my steps and I'm, and I'm, I'm good because although I can't see the where where this is going and i might not be able to see the end game i know that you do and you see everything and so i've been in those situations where i've been fighting god and i've been been in those situations where i've allowed god to direct my steps and i can tell you i i prefer to allow god to direct my steps where i'm not fighting him and i hope that you can find yourself in that same situation you know we've been looking at the life of saul and Saul, at, at one point in his life, allowed God. I mean, he allowed God to do great things in his life. And he, almost to the point, he was like, uh, I'm just kind of bouncing around. And then all of a sudden, God comes on the scene. And he allows God to use him and move him. But he gets to a point where Saul decides to start fighting God. He doesn't like the way God is doing things. He doesn't want to do things on God's uh, you know, God's way. He wants to do things his way. So he winds up fighting God. And we see this in, in his life, you know, this fighting, allowing and fighting. And we see it very, very uh, key, key in his life. And it's a very easy thing to see here. You know, sometimes, sometimes if, if you're not really in tune with what is going on, if you're not staying in that place where you're really in tune with the Spirit and with God, you might not realize you're fighting God. If you're not walking close with God. Now, it's very clear here in Saul's life when he decided to do his own things. After fighting and he went up against the Amalekites, he decided to do things on his own. He cared more about what people people thought instead of what God thought. And so that was the point where God said, oh, man, I'm really sorry that I made Saul king. I'm really sorry that this happened. And then we've been talking about how the spirit, the anointing was removed off of Saul and was put into David, was put on David. And, and so when we start talking about Saul, you can't talk about Saul with eventually talking about David. Now, we're not going to go into David's life. It is a great story. And maybe in the future we will do that. But we're going to touch a little bit. We've got to touch a little bit about Saul and David because they get intertwined here. And that's where we're going to be today. Remember, are you fighting it or are you allowing it? Are you fighting God or are you allowing God? Because what we see here is we're going to see two different people. One who is fighting God and one who is allowing God. And you're going to see what ha it's so clear on which side you want to fall on. It's so clear that you want to be the type of person that allows God and doesn't fight God. So let's go ahead and go there. We're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 18 to read the story of Saul and, uh, and, and David here. We're going to read verses 10 to 30. Uh, a great, it's all good stuff, really good stuff. I mean, you know, it's first Samuel and, and second Sam. I mean, you could just start reading that and just go and go, but let's go ahead and start. We're going to just read from verse 10 to 30. Now it came about on the next day that an evil spirit from God came mightily upon Saul and he raved in the midst of the house. Now, listen, I got to tell you right now, if you haven't listened to last week's 
uh, devotional, then go back and listen to that one because that's important. We talk about the, this evil spirit and we talk about all that kind of stuff. So, uh, and, it, and, it, and he raved in the midst of the house while David was playing the harp with his hand as usual and the spear was in Saul's hand. Saul hurled the spear for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David escaped from his presence twice. <laughs> twice. Can you imagine? Like, here, here's the guy that you're playing for to, to calm down the evil spirits in his life. And you've had a lot of success doing that. But then he has a spirit. He tries to kill you not once, but twice. I mean, that's crazy. So can you imagine what type of person you have to be to throw a spear at someone not once? but twice and a person who is helping you do you got to do you see how crazy that person's got to be right i want to use the word jacked up now i hope you you track it with me that's really jacked up that he wants to throw a spear and the fact that david even came back after that very first time so verse 12 now saul was afraid of david for the lord was with him but had departed from Saul. That is the key scripture right there. That is the important thing right there. That is the scariest, one of the scariest verses in the whole Bible, knowing that the spirit had departed Saul, right? And because of that, he had gone down this road where he's fighting God now. Verse 13, therefore Saul removed him from his presence and appointed him as his commander of a thousand and he went out and came in before the people. David was prospering in all his ways, for the Lord was with him. When Saul saw that he was prospering greatly, he dreaded him. But all Israel and Judah loved David, and he went out and came in before him, before them. Then, the, then Saul said to David, Here is my oldest daughter Merib. I will give her to you as a wife. Only be a valiant, valiant man for me and fight the Lord's battles. You see that talk there, that, that Christian smooth, you know, believer talk, right? Not Christian talk. There's no Christians at this time, but that smooth religious talk. You know, it's like, hey, I, I don't like you. I, I, I'm fighting against you. I'm throwing spears at you. But you know what? Be a valiant guy for me. I'm going to give you my daughter and fight the Lord's battles. Amen, brother. You know, I mean, come on, get that. That's crazy. And so many times that stuff, don't, don't get confused just because it's spiritual talk and, and, and there is, you know, religious terms thrown in there. We've got to be wise, right? Be led by the spirit. My hand shall not, for Saul thought, my hand shall not be against him, but let the hand of the Philistines be against him. But David said to Saul, who am I? And what is my life or my father's family in Israel that I should be the king's son-in-law? So it came about at the time when Merib, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David that she was given to Adriel the Meholahite for a wife. Now look at David's heart. He's like, man, I'm nobody. I'm a nobody. I'm like, it came from you know the, the, the flocks. I'm a shepherd boy. And here I am. I'm in the king's household. I'm, I'm, I'm playing the heart for him. Now I'm leading the you know armies and I'm going, leading thousands of soldiers out there. But he still had this, this heart that said, man, who am I to marry the, the king's daughter? I mean, come on, I'm a nobody. That, that, that doesn't need to happen. And so uh, this daughter was given to another man. Verse 20, now Michal, or Michael, Saul's daughter, loved David. And when they told Saul, the thing was agreeable to him. Saul thought, I will give her to him that she may become a snare to him and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Therefore, Saul said to David, for a second time, you may be my son-in-law today. Then Saul, can you, can you, how jacked up is that? For a second time, you may be my son-in-law today. Can you imagine someone telling you that? Then Saul commanded his servants, speak to David secretly, saying, Behold, the king delights in you, and all his servants love you. Now therefore, become the king's son-in-law. So Saul's servants spoke these words to David. But David said, listen to David's heart again, Is it trivial in your sight to become the king's son-in-law, since I am a poor man and lightly esteemed? The servants of Saul reported to him according to these words which David spoke. Saul then said, Thus you shall say to David, 
The king does not desire any dowry except a hundred foreskins of the Philistines to take vengeance on the king's enemies. Again, how couched in spiritual language is that? I, I don't want, I just, just the, the king's enemies. Do it, do it for the king, right? Just take vengeance on the king's enemies. Now Saul planned to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. When his servants told David these words, it pleased David to become, to become the king's son-in-law. Before the days had expired, David rose up and went, he and his men, and struck down 200 men among the Philistines. Now remember, he was only required to get 100. He got 200. Then David brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full number to the king, that he might become the king's son-in-law. So Saul gave him Michael, his daughter, for a wife. When Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David and that Michael, Saul's daughter, loved him, then Saul was even more afraid of David. Thus Saul was David's enemy continually. Listen to that. Here's your father-in-law. He just gave you your, I mean, this, your wife. He's your father-in-law. You've been helping him. You've been, you've been ministering to him you know, in music. You've been doing all this. And, the, and Saul was David's enemy continually, right? Verse 30, then the commanders of the Philistines went out to battle, and it happened as often as they went out that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so his name was highly esteemed. Man, I, I got to tell you, you know, David was this, this guy who just was out there and was allowing God to do what God needed to do in his life. And, and I don't know about you, man, but that's the type of person that I want to be, that I want to be. I want to be the person that I allow the things of God, the anointing of God to work in my life versus the type of person that Saul was who fought the things of God. He fought the spirit of God and the spirit departed him. And because of that, he goes down this spiral that where you are trying to use your own daughter to kill off this guy that you are deathly afraid of, right? So I want to share a couple of thoughts here with you. And the first thing is this. The further away from God, the further away that Saul got away from God, the more depraved he became. The further away he was from the Spirit, the further away he was from the things of God, the further and further he went down this depraved madness and this craziness that he, it didn't matter what he did. It doesn't matter who he tried to hurt. He just didn't want the things of God to move forward. He didn't want David, who by this time was already anointed to be the next king of Israel. He didn't want him to move forward. He didn't want to see him blessed. He didn't want to see him excel. He didn't want to see him successful. But he was willing to use anyone and anything around him to counter that thing. You see, and that's what happens. You know, when we begin to fight God, and the, and the more that we start fighting God, and the more that we resist God, the further away we get from the Spirit, the, the crazier our world gets, the crazier our lives get. You know, have you ever known someone who was a believer at one point? And then because of for whatever reason started heading down a different path. And then you just later on, you saw them and you're like, I don't even recognize this person anymore. You know, I don't even recognize who this person has become because they have moved so far away from God. And that's what we see in Saul. In, in like you read in the New Testament, we look at the Old Testament, and we see what happened there. We see the stories that are written there, and we desire to apply those in our lives because we don't want to be like Saul, who fought God. We want to be like David, who allowed God and the Spirit to move in his life. I want you to see the conspiracy that was going on here, the conspiracy against David. I mean, the further he gets away from God, the more he fights God, there's this conspiracy that he, he doesn't, it doesn't matter what is going on. He's got servants going back and forth and, and his spies telling him what, he, you know, what needs to happen and people going up to, to David. And David is acting honorably and David is acting, you know, he's right. He's like, who am I? I'm, I'm a nobody. But 
Saul is behind the scenes trying to manipulate things. And here's the thing. It doesn't matter how much he tries to manipulate. God is still in control. God is still doing it. God is still there. And that's another point that's so important here. Listen, I need you to get this point right here. When God is involved, listen, I don't know where you are right now. I don't know what life is like for you. I don't know if you're going through a trial right now or things are, are really good. I don't know if your trial might start tomorrow. But I need you to get this. When God is involved, nothing that anyone else wants to do, no matter who they are, will prosper if God doesn't want it to. When God is involved, no matter who comes against you, no matter what comes against you, no matter what people try to throw, no matter how they conspire, no matter what, what they try to do in darkness, no matter what they try to do in the, in the back rooms, no matter what the dealings are, it's not going to go anywhere if God doesn't want it. It will not prosper if God doesn't want it to. I mean, that's what we see right here so plain with, with David. It doesn't matter all the things that, that Saul is trying, all the backroom dealings, all the, hey, go tell David this, all the manipulation, all that is happening doesn't work out because God is involved, because the Spirit of God is all over David, and, and God is looking after David, and, and, and David is God's anointed man to be the next king. And so it doesn't matter how much uh, uh, Saul throws. Hey, uh, let's go ahead and, 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 and remove him from my presence. Let me make him uh, a commander of a thousand. And he goes out there and he has success. All right, okay, so uh, I'll give you my daughter, but I need a hundred foreskin. Okay, you need a hundred foreskin? Let me bring you two hundred foreskin. No, you you want to you want to to kill off you know kill off David and and put him fighting against the Philistines? Oh no no, he's going to have success. And guess what? The everyone is going to love him. Everything that that Saul tried to do and to throw at David wound it up backfiring on, on him because God was involved. And listen, that is so good news for us. That is so good news for those of us who are believers and who want to allow God to move in our lives. And what we want to allow God to, to, to be the one who directs our lives. Because it means that God's will is the very best place to be in. When, when God's will is active in our life, when we are seeking God's will, when our prayer is, God, I, I want what you want. I, I, I don't I, I don't see it right now. I can't put my wrap my head around it right now. I don't understand things right now, but God, I want what you want. It was that prayer that Jesus prayed in the garden before he was crucified. Father, I, I don't want this. I mean this is Jesus. I, I don't want this. He knew what crucifixion was going to be. But not my will, your will. And if we get to that point when it's like, not my will, but your will. Not Saul's will, but David's will. Not Saul's type of will, but David's type of will. When we get into that mode, man, God can use that. And God can bless that. And God will do it. And that's the best place to be in. God's will. Because you know, it's like, you know what? God's in control. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to have a rough time. That doesn't mean that you're going to go through trial. That you're not going to go through trials. David went through trials. David was fighting bat. David was fighting battles. David was running from King Saul's spears. He was doing all of that, but he was still blessed. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that being in God's will doesn't mean that you're not going to have issues come up. But it does mean that you realize that God is in control. And those things that are happening, that that it, it, it's nothing when you compare it to what that God is in control and that God's got you. And so that's the that's the other thing is that you can trust that God has you. You can trust that God has you when you when you realize that you 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 want to allow the things of God in your life and you're walking according to God's will. 
then you can trust that God has you and that you never, you don't have to worry about where you're headed and where you're going. You might be going down, uh, uh, you know, you might have some financial situations, but you still can go in, you know, go into that and face that and knowing that God is in control. You know, I said this not too long ago, but I think it was probably uh, a little over a year ago. Um, our air condition broke down and, you know, I knew that it was getting close to doing that. And I was, I was concerned about it. I wasn't ready financially for it. I would have loved to be able to say, yay, I got all the money in the bank and let's just come on, come, you know, give us a new air condition. Let me throw down all this money, but I didn't have it. And so, man, I was stressing. I was stressing. I was not in a good mood because I don't like to stress over finances. And so, so that was going on but then i i was taking my time to pray and seek the lord and the lord's like i got it i got you don't worry and you know i was able to contact the bank and the bank worked so fast to, to prepare a loan with a really like almost nothing interest rate and so it's just it just everything worked out and can, let me tell you something this peace completely came over when i got to the point where like god i'm just gonna trust you God, I'm just going to, I, I, I don't, I don't see where the money is going to come. I don't see how it's all going to work out, but I'm just going to trust you. All It's just money. When I did that, I can't explain to you the level of peace that came. And so when we begin to trust in the Lord, you know, we, we talk about trust and we talk about faith. Faith is, is something that you have when you can't see it. And, and you have that faith and like, I'm going to try, I'm going to believe in the Lord and have faith in that. But trust comes, trust is different. Trust comes from experience and trust comes from being able to see the Lord work in your life over and over again. And in trust is you're able to say, oh yeah, he's got it. No big deal. And it, it's coming from a place of truly believing that not saying not working yourself up and like okay god's gonna get this god's gonna get this god's gonna get this it comes from a point of i've seen god do it before and he's going to do it and so let me tell you next time there's a situation whether it's financial whether it's medical whether no matter whatever it is i'm not saying that i'm not going to stress a little bit i'm not saying that i might have a freak out moment but it's going to be so much easier for me to say all right, God, I'm, I'm giving it to you because I have experienced him so many more times doing things. And I know that when he's got it, he's got it. And so when you're walking in his will and you allow his will to be the, the, the thing in your life that you see, then you can trust that God has you. And then the last thing that I want to say here is you don't have to fear when the evil one wants to do something to you. We're living in crazy times right now. We're crazy living in a crazy world. And and right now there's so many, it's, the world is so divided and our country is so divided and, and people are looking at all the different things out there. We can look at good versus evil. We can look at all of that kind of stuff. But when you're walking in God's will, you know that he has you. You don't have to fear about the next thing that's co that's coming up. You don't have to fear. You know, some people live like that. And and there's been times maybe when, when I've lived like that as well. I'm like, oh my gosh, what's, com what's coming next? You know, and, and, and I, I don't know. Have you ever been there before? Where it's kind of like, oh my gosh, this happened. What's, what's next? Come on, what's next? And so it's like, you're waiting for the next hammer to drop. You're waiting for the next thing to happen. And when you are living and, and okay, so let me go back. When those types of things have happened in my life, I haven't had that strong relationship. I haven't had that strong foundation. I hadn't, wasn't seeking the Lord like I should have. But when you get to that point where you are seeking the Lord, when you are allowing God's will in your life and, and you, you come across those things, they might be a little bit of a road bump, but then you get to the point where it's like, you know what? I don't have to fear. God's got it. I don't have to fear about this. I, I have it. And so that fear, you don't, you're not coming from a place of fear anymore. You're coming from a place of looking at, God, what do you have for me here? What's the next thing that you have for me? And so that's so important because there's a lot of people that I know that live out there and they live in fear. And we're not supposed to live in fear. We're supposed to live according to God's will and what God has for us. 
I want to close out with this scripture, Psalms chapter 37, verse uh, 23 to 24. Let me go there in my browser. Let's look at this. The steps of a man are established by the Lord, and he delights in his way. When he falls, he will not be hurled headlong, because the Lord is the one who holds his hand. Look, like I said earlier, I don't know where you are right now. I don't know if you're in a situation where you're struggling. Who knows, you might be in a situation tomorrow when you're struggling. But I know that if you allow God in your life, if you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you, if you allow God to be number one, then your steps will be established by the Lord. And when you get to that situation, when you fall and you stumble, you don't hurl headlong and completely lose it. You just trip a little bit. You just... Uh, you know, you're walking along and you just, you know, you, it's like when you catch your, your shoe on, on, you know, on, on, a, on a root or something that's stuck up or whatever, you stumble a little bit, but God has your hand. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want to live their life knowing that God has your hand? So allow God to be God in your life. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. Man, if you've been struggling right now and, and you've been having some hard times, you need to go back and say, have I been really allowing God to be God in my life? Or have I been doing it all on my own? Have I been operating from fear? Have I been operating from manipulating it myself? Have I been operating from, uh, you know, just just trying to, to, to do it all on my own? Instead of trusting in God and living according to his way and living according to what he desires for my life. Man, that's some good stuff. And I know that you're over where you are right now listening to this saying amen and amen because it is some good stuff. <laughs> All right, man, I, I hope, listen, that you're in a, in, in a place where God is big in your life. But if not, come on, let's, let's do this. Let, let's, let's seek the Lord with all our hearts. Let's be like David in, in, the, in the presence of Saul. This crazy world that we live in right now and all the things that are going on, the world needs believers who are going to live according to the word of God and that are going to let their light shine out there. Amen. Let me pray. Father, we thank you so much. Lord, that we have these examples in the Bible of how to live our lives. And we thank you that we can see this, this difference, this vast difference. And we look at Saul and the way that he treated David and the way things were going on. But we know that it was because he was so far away from you. And we know because his spirit, was, your spirit was, was removed from him. Lord, we thank you that we have the Holy Spirit, every single one of us. And the Holy Spirit is not removed from us, Lord, because we desire you, we seek you. That, that is the thing that is the biggest thing in our lives. That's what we want. So I pray for everyone who's watching this video, Lord, right now and, and listening to this devotion. And if they're struggling, Lord God, I pray that they would seek you right now and realize that that is the key to where, where they need to be. Their next step is to trust you, not their next step is to get some more money or to, you know, fight people in their lives or whatever it might be. The next step is to draw close to you. And those of us who right now are living according to your will and, and are, are strong in what you have for us, walking according to your ways, Lord, help us to be that light out there because things are crazy. You know it. Nothing that is happening right now is a surprise to you. We thank you that we can be that light out there where other people can know that there is something more than just what they're seeing in this world, what they're seeing on social media, what they're seeing on television, that there's more to it all. And there's more to even when we breathe our last breath. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this video, this devotional and being part of this. We just want to say thank you. And we look forward to 
Sunday morning when we do this again live. You are, we welcome you to come and join with us where we get to worship and we get to uh, seek the Lord together and uh, we, we get to see the, the next thing. What does God want for us? So again, bless you. Have a great week and we will see you Sunday.